Did you know many of the famous dishes you eat today may have been discontinued once? Luckily, they still managed to find a way back to our dinner tables. So let's set the table with 20 foods from the 70s that made a successful comeback after disappearing. Let's start with the egg foo young. Omelets are no stranger to being the go-to breakfast for Americans. The egg foo young was no different. The egg foo young was particularly liked because it diverted from traditional omelet recipes and added a savory gravy into the mix. Standing out as more of a main course rather than a breakfast, the egg dish would come with several toppings like seafood, vegetables, and drizzles of sauce. Egg Fu Young could be traced back to the 70s as it was part of a Chinese cookbook that was released in English. All dishes have a burning point and sadly, despite being popular amongst many consumers, Egg Fu Young's demand started declining. Soon enough, staggering amounts of restaurants discontinued this dish and removed it from their menu. The dish was picked up by local Chinese and Cantonese restaurants in the U.S. who brought the incredible taste back. Picture this. Stagflation in the 70s is influencing inflation in the U.S., and people can barely afford to spend money on items that make them feel good. This is when Beef Wellington was introduced, a cheap dish that would make you feel high-end while eating it. You might have seen it many times on MasterChef USA because every chef in America knows that the Beef Wellington is a special dish. The dish did not achieve immediate success amongst people as only big restaurant chains were serving Beef Wellington. But when American chef Julia Child featured a Beef Wellington recipe on her show, suddenly everyone wanted to make a Beef Wellington. As beef prices shot up, less and less restaurants served Beef Wellington. But as times improved, the dish would subtly crawl back in the many high-end kitchens. While the taste remained the same, the prices shot up drastically. Spam musubi's origins are pretty surprising. Originally popular in Hawaii, this Spam and rice sushi dish had American soldiers charmed. While it was actually meant for housewives, WW2 soldiers popularized the dish because of the ease with which it could be prepared. They were huge fans of the dish considering Spam was one of the few meats they could easily access during service. So Spam musubi was perfect for soldiers who wanted a good meal without too many ingredients. This dish really picked up in popularity around the 1970s. However, its sudden popularity went down after a while. Nowadays, you can still find Spam Musubi in some Japanese-American fusion joints. It is slowly spreading once again as a reliable breakfast option, making a slow and steady comeback for people who are not soldiers yet want a delicious meal. Important American events like the Super Bowl or baseball leagues would be incomplete without dishes like pigs in a blanket. People would have a hard time choosing whether they wanted crispy food or soft, meaty dishes. This problem was solved by the pigs in a blanket. The food took America's two favorites, pastry and hot dogs, then fused them together to create an incredible and hearty snack. Pigs in a blanket were chopped hot dogs embedded in a flaky, crispy pastry dough. They first made their debut in Betty Crocker's Cooking for Boys and Girls. Now, like many foods, they fell in popularity as newer fast food items took the place of cheap snacks like the pigs in a blanket. But it made a successful comeback in New York where several food stands brought the dish back to the streets. How could we forget eggnog, a holiday favorite that has been a part of American cuisine for a long while? To anyone who has ever had any fond Christmas memories, it simply is not the holiday season until it is eggnog time. Americans love eggnog for its spicy notes and using some of their favorite ingredients. Stuff like rum, milk, and eggs are in the heart of any real U.S. citizen. It is surprising that a dish only made a year can last so long. Eggnog never got discontinued because their recipe was available to everyone at all times. The same fate cannot be told about companies that tried to sell bottled eggnog in the off-brand season. Many milk plants produced packaged eggnog to sell in seasons outside for Christmas, but due to lack of sales, these operations would often immediately shut down. Less and less people would find eggnog in markets once Christmas was over. Fortunately, a few milk processing facilities decided to resume year-round production of eggnog, albeit on a small scale. This allowed for true eggnog lovers to find this packaged drink in speciality stores and in limited locations. Another dish just as beloved as the last is sweet and sour pork. 
This Cantonese dish found its way into the hearts and bellies of Americans with ease in the 19th century. We have early Chinese migrants to thank for the introduction of sweet and sour pork. In America, it is a lot different than the traditional version. You would get small cubed pork alongside diced bell pepper and rice and a lot of ketchup. This is the version that made its home in the kitchens of Americans everywhere. It exploded in popularity as a guaranteed item on the menu of mom and pop joints. Much like other foods on this list, sweet and sour pork faced a hiccup when it temporarily disappeared from restaurants due to the introduction of newer, fancier variations of pork. The demand for this classic dish never went down, and eventually, restaurants were inclined to bring it back. Remember Hormel? Connoisseurs of canned cuisine? They brought corned beef hash to the States in around the 1970s. This hearty breakfast dish has survived the tests of time as it would be discontinued then brought back almost instantaneously, until the beef hash found a permanent place in American cuisine. The food has ties to WW2 as it was a lot more popular back then to eat canned options or packaged food. Beef hash was particularly well-liked because meat was hard to come by at the time. Fresh meat in particular was always rationed immediately. This made Hormel products a must-buy for people back in the day. While hash has been around in America for even longer, it became really popular in the 40s. Though in the post-war era, it did fall off in popularity, urging the company to discontinue the product. Beef hash made a comeback in the 70s when inflation hit, as people were looking for cheaper alternatives. Since then, this dish has slowly been making a return to many restaurants these days, especially as a cheap takeout option. We also had chicken marbella, which rivaled beef options like beef hash. Americans have always enjoyed an incredible variety of food. Popular American chefs Julie Rosso and Sheila Lukens popularized and invented chicken marbella, a dish made using chicken, prunes, olives, and capers. The recipe was first seen in the Silver Palette cookbook. The cookbook recipe was very popular in the Jewish community and quickly became popular amongst larger groups of people across America. Towards the 80s, chefs across the country decided that the chicken marbella needed a revamp. This decision would prove costly as people started disapproving of the dish when chefs added sun-dried tomatoes instead of olives. Clearly, they went a bit overboard and people began to refrain from ordering the chicken marbella. In a frenzy, dinner joints had to remove the chicken marbella from the menu until they could go back to the original recipe. Since then, restaurants have stuck to the OG flavor more keenly. We are still continuing the Meat Express because next on the list is Salisbury Steak. Dietitian James Salisbury invented the steaks to help out with increased digestive issues and illnesses that were spreading rapidly in the U.S. The now dinner staple, Salisbury steak, involved a hamburger patty and was mostly known to be a steak with high-quality beef and gravies. The healthy aspect was ensured by keeping the gravies homemade and the beef clean. The Salisbury steak started losing customers as illnesses started to decrease in the populace. As a result, lots of restaurants stopped serving it regularly. However, now it is returning. Whether that is due to digestive issues coming back with it or a growing love for the vintage, you can find this at American Steak much more commonly now. Chicken croquettes were the heart and soul of road stop diners everywhere. You could always stop in any state for these breaded and fried chicken patties and they'd be served. Croquettes took off especially around the 1920s. That can explain why people may see them as old-fashioned now. Still, they have been regular for Americans for a long while. It was included in American cookbooks like The Virginia Housewife and Directions for Cookery. That is definitely a testament to its popularity. Chicken croquettes lost their popularity commercially, however, as many roadside stalls and restaurants stopped serving them. As processed and frozen food became common, the snack made a triumphant return as frozen food. Gourmet croquettes also started showing up at newer, trendy restaurants, suggesting a comeback of this beloved food to the States. Sandwiches have always had an iconic space in American cuisines. The grilled cheese sandwich is especially iconic given the status it holds for being the best lunch snack. Kraft Foods profited off this love for grilled cheese and created cheese whiz on everything. This thin cheese spread quickly became the main ingredient in creating the perfect cheese sandwich. Dairy products like fresh cheese had a low shelf life as compared to the cheese spread. 
This prompted people to buy Cheese Whiz. In the 70s, the spread reached peak popularity amongst masses. This was until the original flavor was discontinued. The reason was simple. Kraft Foods wanted to improve their product to cater to a wider audience. They hoped by improving their original recipe, Cheese Whiz would be consumed by locals and gourmet chefs alike. The product came back onto the shelf pretty soon with a new formula. Today, the spread can be seen in homes and restaurants to create gourmet grilled cheese sandwiches. Chicken Roulade came to the United States through a French cookbook called Le Cuisinier Gascon. This book has the earliest traceable recipe of the iconic chicken roulade. Yet another poultry dish, the chicken roulade is made using chicken breasts that are stuffed with various fillings like spinach, cheese, or ham. The chicken is then baked until it is ready to eat. Chicken roulade was a famous entree at restaurants back in the day until chefs started to come up with newer and improved chicken main courses. This caused traditional recipes like chicken roulade to get sidelined and eventually discontinued. It experienced a comeback in 2005 when many cooking blogs rediscovered the traditional French dish. This caused several French restaurants across the states to bring this classic food back. For a change of pace, let us look at dishes that were less traditional. Salmon patties were a budget-friendly fish cake that emerged when budget food was in high demand. Let us set the scene. It is the Great Depression. People are hungry and many are sick. Poultry like chicken and beef was priced unbelievably. The canned salmon and salmon patties were brought in by the government to help as a last resort. This resort was quite successful as people fell in love with the delicious salmon patties. The patties had their peak in popularity in the Great Depression era and past that. They faded out of memory as economic capacities settled. While the affordable can never came back, chefs created salmon patties inspired by the original taste. Today, you can find these patties being made with high-quality salmon and modern seasonings. Another meaty dish beloved by the South was liver and onions. Sautéed onions that would be paired with thin slices of liver and a side of mashed potatoes quickly became the new comfort food. In the inflation-stricken 70s, liver and onions was an affordable, healthy meal to have at your favorite diner if you really wanted to have a nice day out. This explains why the dish had its highest spikes in popularity through the 70s. Struggling against time, the dish disappeared from American cuisines as taste preferences changed. People wanted more chicken and beef as compared to liver and onions. However, they have made a comeback. In less affordable and more gourmet settings, Liver and onions are found in health-focused restaurants that serve this meal to people looking for healthy alternatives while eating out. This might not be the best comeback for a meal that was once a staple dinner at homes, but at least it has not disappeared. Speaking of healthier options, avocado soup is a great example of healthy foods from the 70s. The healthy aspect did not make it famous at the time, however. Its unique taste came from various ingredients like avocados, buttermilk, salt and pepper, water and soup stock that made this dish famous. It was a burst of flavors in one soup, so naturally people fell in love with the appetizer. It was one of the most popular fruit soups of the 20th century. As avocados became expensive, the dish started to vanish. The growing trend of healthier eating in a keto diet and healthy meals brought the soup back. You now see avocado soup once again, especially among home chefs. This food is a fan favorite amongst health experts, so it is no surprise that the soup made a comeback. Creamed corn with bacon was one of the most popular dietary staples of Midwest America. Corn has always had a treasured history. The states love their corn in all forms. No wonder the creamed corn with bacon was a success. The dish had an incredible run throughout the 60s and 70s. What had started as a humble side dish quickly became a main dish that every table in the Midwest had. As newer appetizers came to the table, creamed corn and bacon faced a slight decline in consumption. This food was never officially discontinued, but it definitely started disappearing from menus. Luckily, home chefs never let the recipe go. Creamed corn with bacon can still be seen on many dinner spreads across the country today. Continuing on from corn to another beloved vegetable, stuffed celery. Many breakfast places in the 70s served stuffed celery as a starter or side dish. The healthy snack was particularly popular amongst the bodybuilding community as a breakfast or afternoon meal. 
The dish was simple. Celery stalks were stuffed with fillings like cheese, vegetables, and dry fruits to make a crunchy and healthy meal. Celery had always been a popular vegetable choice in the States, hence stuffed celery was a widely consumed dish. Stuffed celery met its downfall not because the taste was no longer good enough, but because this meal was not easily accessible to middle and lower class families. Being served at high-end restaurants had its drawbacks, and people moved towards other dishes stuffed celery was forgotten. It did have a comeback recently in numerous health-conscious restaurants aiming to create an all-green menu. By the 1970s, pickled herring became a widely known appetizer in America. Plain herring was not that exciting, so people looked at pickling it as a way to spice it up. Some would even have bananas dressed in pickled herring with toppings like parsley. It would be consumed with exotic ingredients like oyster liquor. It was often consumed on special occasions like Christmas. In the 2000s, it definitely lost its charm, though. Restaurants did not know what to do with pickled herrings as less consumers were buying the dish. Suddenly, pickled herrings were not anyone's first pick. It has kept making a comeback on many menus that do want to experiment with old forgotten dishes. New variations by people trying out vintage recipes have helped breathe new life into it. Variants like herring prepared in red wine are considered gourmet food now. One of the 70s favorites food was salmon loaf. Canned and processed meats were already really popular. It was a healthy, delicious fish that kept you in good health and happy spirits. The budget friendliness of the food was really what made it a fan favorite. Canned salmon served with a creamy dill sauce sounded high end, but it cost next to nothing. A true value for money dish. Salmon loaf eventually stopped being so widely made. People moved on to bigger and flashier dishes. Especially when social media platforms were finding their footing, lots of restaurants showed off their best for marketing, and sadly, Salmon Loaf was not one of them. Now, since pockets are tighter due to inflation, it is making a return as more people are using canned salmon to create dinners like the Salmon Loaf. Ah, to be having a bowl of miso turtle soup. Fortunately, this soup, made with ingredients such as a calf's head and expensive miso, made a comeback with a more accessible recipe, so everyone could get a taste of this delight. Mock miso turtle soup was a budget-friendly variant for the expensive soup, popularized in the 70s. But turtle soup faded away almost entirely after many people felt that the alternative ingredients were just not as good. Eventually, convenience food companies rectified this by modifying recipes and coming out with mock turtle soup-based canned soups that tasted perfect. These became really popular across the state, and today, no one bats an eye at the expensive version of the turtle soup. Did any of the 20 dishes we set the table with make you happy that they made a comeback? If so, like this video, click subscribe, and stay tuned for more nostalgia trips.